Welcome to the Kara's Cares Digital Show. I'm Kara Sundlin, and we love to explore the cutting edge of wellness. And today's episode is actually sponsored by the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services. Well, June is Brain Health Awareness Month. Today, we're speaking with an expert on how you can increase your attention span by actually retraining our tech-spoiled brains. Yes, we do have tech-spoiled brains. Our guest is Dr. Haley Perlis. She's a fitness coach, athlete, and sports psychology expert, and she really has some tips on how we can retrain our spoiled brains. So welcome. Thank you for being with us. Thanks, Kara. Thanks for having me. So we are a society of shortened attention spans. I mean, just look at how everyone loves TikTok. But you say a lot of this is because of technology, smartphones, and social media. We've been trained to have short attention spans. Yeah, we're overstimulated. And so we've actually done a really good job at training our brains to not be able to focus. So we have to now do the reverse. So let's talk about one thing we can do. You say reduce multitasking. Some of us actually think, oh, I'm doing 10 things at once. Look how productive I am. It's the opposite. It, it is. And I know we can't eliminate it. I too live in this world. So it's really about where we can reduce multitasking to increase full engagement because the more we multitask, even though you think you're getting more done, you're actually not as efficient. You're actually draining yourself of energy very quickly and you're making mistakes and your brain really can't focus on one, you know, on more than one thing at a time. If you become a better juggler, you know, I'll focus on this, then I'll focus on this, then I'll focus on this. You can serve energy. You can actually devote your attention to that one, one task. You increase your attention span. You know, you just brought up, that's funny, I was trying to explain this to my kids, and I said, you know, multitasking, I know I do it, whatever, but I was saying this, that multitasking, while you're trying to do your homework and looking at your phone and something else going, you know, where would that ever help you? And my son said, oh, jugglers need to do that, but what you're saying is even jugglers are focusing on one ball at a time. As soon as they have two balls, they make mistakes and they drop all of them. So <laughs> a juggler, no matter how many balls they have in the air, there's only one in their hand at a time. So we need to become better jugglers. Okay. And, you know, there are a lot of people who actually do struggle for real with attention. Like they might have ADHD or uh, things that their brain works a little bit differently. But all of us can exercise our own brain to increase attention span. Absolutely. By focusing strategically on crossword puzzles, Sudoku, Wordle is popular right now, even um, games. So with my consulting practice, I have actually people play video games, not forever, not hours and hours and hours, but you devote a specific amount of time um, and not probably as long as we are doing, but you devote that time. Then you take a recovery break because we all need to renew energy. So you step away and then you go back in and those you know, short games like a, a Wordle or a Sudoku, a crossword puzzles, crossword search, those things are actually excellent. So 15 minutes a day, five days a week. We talk about doing that at the gym. If you even did 15 minutes a day, five days a week, your body would change. But you will see change in your brain pretty quickly from even doing that. Absolutely. You're tuning in, and then you're going to tune out and renew energy, and then you're going to tune in and train your brain. It's like a muscle. You go in there and I, I love, you know, you said the, the gym, you go in there, you do your reps and do your sets, same types of things. You dive in and you exercise your brain, then you have to step away. We can't just go, 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 go playing uh, games all day long well, or focusing all day long. You bring up exercise. I mean, one time when we kind of feel sometimes much better, not only all the good things exercise does, but we are really focused when you're exercising, can that actually be a form of training your brain, being really in the zone while you're doing a sport or exercise? You know what, I've actually never thought about that, but why not? I'm zoning into something very technical and tactical. Hey, I don't know, maybe there's a partnership here with you and I, because I'm sharing ideas and you're getting creative. I love that. <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you're, you're zoning in and you're focusing on specific technique. You're devoting your attention to something that you're in doing intentionally and strategically but then remember, we do need to take some recovery. Yeah. So let's talk about phones. A lot of us have our phones right near us. And really, none of us, not all of us are, most of us are not brain surgeons. So we probably don't need to have every alert going off. How important is it for you to put your phone away when you're in a focus period, say, doing email at work or kids doing homework? Well, you have to know yourself. And I think for most of us, it can be a huge distraction. So you absolutely put it away and test yourself. See if you can go 10 minutes and then go look and say, you probably didn't miss anything or you didn't miss anything that couldn't wait for 10 minutes. Then push it to 15, then push it to 20. You almost have to 
we feel guilty or we, you know, if we're not looking at our phones all the time and not immediate response, but everything's going to be okay. We also have an addiction now. We're addicting to those, you know, those dings and alerts. Train yourself out of that by testing 10 minutes. I'm still good. I'm still healthy. Those messages are still there and they're going to be okay if I respond to them now instead of 10 minutes earlier and then 15 and then 20 and see how long you can go. And it is an addiction, right? I mean, this actually activates the dopamine, the centers of our brain. I mean, we, even as adults, and we yell at our kids all the time, but we get addicted to looking at that and seeing, did I miss anything? We absolutely do. And so what we need to do also is replace that repeat behavior. So it's not just putting your phone down and then you know, waiting until those 10 minutes are up. Go and do something different. Go engage your body. Go and get, get outside, enjoy nature. Find that dopamine elsewhere. What about hydration? You say sometimes we're feeling antsy, but we really could just be thirsty? Our brains are two thirds water, I believe. So our brains are full of water. So we need to drink water for a couple of reasons. I think of water as a cleansing mechanism. I also think of it as an energizing mechanism. So it cleans out all of the toxins in our brains and, and our bodies. And it also allows us to renew energy. And if our bodies are mostly, and our brains are mostly water, we need to drink more water. And people will ask me, well, is it half my body weight in ounces or eight glasses a day? Just drink more between you. You know, I, I very seldom come across someone who's overhydrated. So just drink more. First thing in the morning, drink 16 ounces of water, add some lemon to it. Middle of the day for, you know, evening, probably not right before bedtime. Um, so you're not waking up in the middle of the night, but just drink more water, hydrate. Well, bonus, and I know that you uh, also work in the exercise world, but all the trainers who come on our shows also tell us it's very important for our metabolism. So if we want to lose weight or you want to lean out, drinking water is really important too. So <laughs> we get that bonus, extra motivation. Meetings are terrible. They're the bane of our existence, right? Especially if you have a short attention <laughs> span. And, and I'm thinking kids also. When they're in a class, especially a boring one where they just have to listen to an instructor, um, how do we prevent ourselves from zoning out and actually build our attention? Yeah, we have to choose ways to be engaged. So perhaps, you know, if you're talking to your kids, set a goal with them that, you know, within every class, you're going to ask at least one question. So you're engaged and you know that you have to listen in order to know how to ask. And same thing in meetings. Uh, make sure that you that you want to you know tune in by being engaged, knowing that you're going to have to ask a question or provide some input. Another option is to also take notes with pen and paper. It's a lot difficult. For, it's it's a lot easier, I should say, to type and again start that multitasking. But if I'm pen to paper, I really need to stay focused and engaged, and then that solidifies my attention span. Thank you for making me write with uh, around my dinner table because uh, young kids now they all want to take all I can write on my iPad. I don't I hate paper. But really, if we're just trying to actually learn faster and retain information and be focused, pen to paper matters. I believe so, because I can type and start thinking about other things. I can you know, I can I can use my fingers, but pen to paper. It takes a lot. It takes a little bit longer to write those words. I have to be more focused, have to be more engaged. I have to be more associated. I have one more tip with regards to meetings. Is that okay yes, that I please. throw this in there? Yes. Move your body. Move your body. So get into the get into the habit and you so turn your phones off, but also I want you to have calendar reminders to remind you to move your body every hour for at least one minute. And it might be just doing this. It might be doing this. It might be standing up and sitting down, but just move your body, get blood circulating through your body. Blood carries oxygen, blood carries energy. That will also help you stay energized, which will allow you to stay focused and increase your attention span. Mm -hmm. And listening to music, but uh, you say Jay-Z, Lizzo, Drake, they will not help us. They might be fun, but they will not help us build our attention. <laughs> It will be fun, but again, that's kind of a distracting piece, right? We, we, we want to lose what we're going through, what we're thinking about, and we just want to lose ourselves into the music. Choosing additional different types of music, classical, instrumental, and it varies person to person, but there's certain music that we can press play that actually helps us tune in. It's association. Dissociation is tuning out when you get lost in the lyrics. Association is turning on some sound that actually allows you to tune in. When I was in, uh, when I was a student, libraries, I couldn't focus. It was too quiet. I actually needed some background noise to allow me to focus in and increase my attention span.
Yeah, I use that here when we're working in a loud newsroom. I'll put on headphones and I have uh, certain uh, very classical calming sounds. I've heard of binaural beats. Um, there's Spotify playlists of binaural beats. What do you suggest if people just, you know, everyone's using their Apple Music or their Spotify. Is there something that they should say, hey, Siri, play this, and that will help with studying or paying attention? Yeah, you could just, you know, calming music, you know, you could even just say focusing music. Let's see what that comes up with. Because I don't know that sometimes they search through your library or they know that what you've listened to in the past. And then you play around with it. This is trial and error. You have to know what works for you. But there is this idea of this background. It allows you to create an emotion, which is more of a focus, which allows you to focus. It's a calming motion, a peace motion, and a, a, a motion that builds attention. And finally, you can't replace getting good sleep right? And good nutrition and exercise. You mentioned moving and meditation. We didn't talk a lot about that, but um, that could mean just a couple of minutes a day of breathing, right? You don't have to get in some altered state, but we're practicing coming back to the present moment. Absolutely. Actually, I have one great, it's more of an active meditation, but when you go outside, just for a moment, just stop and just focus on what you think uh, of what you see. Just focus on what you're seeing. Then focus on what you're smelling. Then focus on what you're hearing. Then focus on what you're feeling. So you're directing your mind. And that's a form of active meditation and increases your prefrontal cortex. I love it. I love it. That's where, all, that's where all that attention is right there in the prefrontal cortex. Am I pointing to the right spot? <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting somewhere there as long as we're not here that's the amygdala okay. we don't want that that's the, that's part more that's, the, anxiety that's the reactive part right okay right. <laughs> all right we'll do a brain anatomy another day um i want to let people know that you have a website um for more information can you shout out the best place to reach you and follow you on social yeah website is the best place because you can connect with me directly www.dr um, that's just dr haleyperlis.com Perfect. And for those who are watching on our streaming channel, you can see that at the bottom of the screen. For those who are listening in the car, uh, don't multitask. Just do one thing at a time. So thank you, doctor, for being with us. Juggle while you drive, right? <laughs> yeah. Just keep your thank eyes you at 10 me. and 2. Hands at 10 and 2. Okay, thanks. All right, that is our time for this edition of Kara's Cures. And you can follow us, follow me on social media at Kara's at Kara Sundlin. Uh, you can also join the Facebook group, Kara's Cures. Search for it on Facebook, and I post that content there. Also, don't forget to subscribe and share the Kara's Cures podcast. You can find more information on the cutting edge of wellness. Have a great day and be well. When Channel 3 triggers an early warning weather alert, it means disruptive weather is coming to Connecticut and that it will have an impact on you. Early warning weather alerts, only from Channel 3. This ain't no gritty crime drama. No being voted off the island. That ain't what we do. That's not me, that's Drew. I'm a brother, he's a white dude. Let's make a deal. Weekdays on CBS. Every day. Millions of people are connecting. And even though we're overcoming obstacles, watching each other's backs, and banding together, we should still make an effort. We should still make an effort to get to know each other on a deeper level. Father. Cosplayer. Mentor. Actor. It's time we take a step forward. It's time we take a step forward. Come together and discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. stronger.
I'm Naheem Hines, proud supporter of the Muscular Dystrophy Association. My mom has muscular dystrophy, and the MDA helps her and kids like my buddy Ethan. My name is Ethan, and I'm 12 years old. Thanks to the Muscular Dystrophy Association and people like you, I have more hope than ever before. And MDA funds over 150 care centers for kids like me. For over 70 years, MDA has been transforming the lives of people living with muscular dystrophy, ALS, and related neuromuscular diseases. Learn more at MDA.org today. This week on 60 Minutes, that. That's incredible. I'm Bill Whitaker with 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes, 60 Minutes. Are you ready for some tough questions? Let me ask you this. How do you answer that? Well, explain that. You had made a decision to give your life for your country. Did you know you had talent? Absolutely. You're going to be on <laughs> 60 Minutes. I 60 Minutes, Sundays at 7 on CBS.